So, uh, brief introduction. Uh, I'm Panu from Finland. I work as a planning officer in Verge, which is a center of excellence in on uh, digital youth work. And I've been working as a youth worker over 10 years and mainly done digital youth work. I have been doing digital youth work in different settings like in out, outreach youth work or working with immigrants and uh, asylum seekers and most of our stuff like uh, our workers from Verke are from Helsinki but uh, I'm alone in the central Finland so I, I'm, I'm the only worker outside uh, Helsinki but hey uh, to be brief uh, Center, Center for Expertise on Digital Youth Work uh, is funded by our uh, uh, Ministry of Education uh, and we have at the moment we have uh, eight workers in uh, Berke and two workers working all, all over all and we have four fifths uh, of the funding uh, coming to Verke and one fifth going to Coordinati. So, uh, what does Verke do? We we keep uh, different kind of trainings to youth workers all over Finland. Uh, we have our, our own social uh, media uh, uh, accounts, and we are ha having this peer support discord channel for all youth workers in Finland. There's over a over, uh, thousand, probably a thousand and five hundred or something like that. Uh, we have different settings like uh, newsletter, blogs, social media channels. We also do different kind of reach for, uh, research and we have one researcher uh, uh, working for us and every year he has different setup that he's uh, checking out. Uh, last of it was uh, uh, he was researching how the digitalization is uh, coming up with uh, municipal youth work. And we produce, produce different kind of material. We have different kind of uh, how to stream guides or how to have LAN parties and uh, material like that, mainly books and web pages. And we also do consulting to different uh, municipalities and organizations uh, and for the church also. And basically what they uh, want us to do, they are pitching us an idea and we can comment it like uh, what kind of uh, settings should be done that it, they could get better funding. But uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with digital youth work, so brief education for, for the topic. So basically digital youth work can be seen a, as a tool or an activity or in content. Uh, and the basic idea for as uh, as using the digitality as a tool is use uh, use it like having a discord uh, server to reach your youngsters or it can be uh, activity like having a lawn party or or you know having a group getting contacted via digital uh, platforms and also uh, as a content. So the smallest uh, way to do digital use work is basically having a conversation with youngster about something digital, like, oh, you have having a new phone or what kind of applications you have on your phone or things like that. So that's the, basically the 
easiest way to get involved with uh, digital use work. Uh, but basically, uh, nowadays, when you think like, uh, is anything analog anymore? So basically, everything in the youth work <laughs> is somehow getting digital. And we are just giving some kind of advices how to use it uh, with the uh, more traditional uh, ways of youth work. But uh, check out our uh, social media pages. There are also content in English or translated in English. Uh, so you can follow us there. But let's go to the today's topic. So digital gaming in, in youth work. Uh, I'm going to talk about briefly about games in youth work and after that going to give you a case example from Ubascular that I made in Minecraft. And after that, I'm giving you a few ideas of games that can be used in, in, uh, in, in youth work. So uh, this screenshot is actually from uh, uh, Ubascular's youth services, uh, Minecraft server. They are our youngsters there, <laughs> as you can see. But basically, uh, why should we use games uh, as part of youth work is that, um, first of all, we have been using uh, games in youth work since the beginning. We have been playing pool or um, ping pong or, or using uh, tabletop games or something like that. And it's a great way to have contact with youngster and uh, have a minute with themselves, you know, ha having some personal time and, and truly uh, get their trust to that they can, you know, relate to you and, and have some common ground. And so, uh, when we have been using all these games all, all, all <laughs> way back in history, so the weird question is that why shouldn't we use the digital games in, in youth work? Uh, I have been using digital uh, games the past 10 years or so, uh, and every time I'm asked like, why do you use digital games couldn't the youngsters do that at their home? Uh, and why, why do they have to come to your place to play? Or why do you have to play with them all online? The most <laughs> easiest answer is that we have to be where the youngsters are. And we have to acknowledge the culture that our youngsters are living. So we have to take a step probably from our uh, space to, to make a leap to something we are not quite familiar with. But uh, Finnish blogger uh, Linda Liukas has mentioned that Fortnite is a place, not a game. Sorry. Uh, and... and uh, as I mentioned earlier, that digital youth work can be a tool or activity or content, but uh, I want to point out that it can be also an environment. I don't know how many of you were listening to Barry's presentation about uh, using VR uh, as a place to do youth work. So basically he's using digitality as an environment. And what we can uh, do with this uh, uh, new environment is that we can meet up such youngsters that wouldn't come to our youth center or uh, cannot come to our places of activities. And I, I live in Jyväskylä and Jyväskylä is probably 80 kilometers wide and over 100 kilometers tall and quite uh, big city uh, as uh, as geographically 
And uh, the problem is that most of the youngsters cannot come to our activities because the long distances or the buses doesn't go or they don't have a moped or tractor to come to our youth centers so we we have to have these kind of places that they can come uh, virtually uh, and lucky for us in in the US club we had a discord server uh, since 2017 so so a few years before uh, the COVID-19. So, so we had already set up the server, we had the rules, we had the youngsters. So we had the easy way to step, <laughs> step out and continue our work. So, and, and all the youngsters already knew that we have such a service. So uh, this is greatly been a, a possibility to us to have more youngsters uh, influenced by our youth work that we are doing. And so uh, as Linda mentioned, the Fortnite is a place. It, it's a social environment that you can go and meet up with your friends. You can watch them play their games. You don't have to even participate. You can just watch and you know talk with your friends like okay how's it doing how was school and and did you get any homework and i was last week and i was at my crannies or something like that and it's not um it's not just game you you don't go there just to play you go there to meet your friends and therefore it's a great place to go to youth work or, or pop pie and, and uh, give possibility to youngsters to have an adult uh, in their life that, you know, lives in the common ground and, and have something similar to uh, with, with adults. But I, I would like to ask you, uh, how have you been using uh digital uh, or digital gaming uh, uh so far have you been using it as tool or activity or content uh there's two times activity uh, to, should be <laughs> environment but do you have any any um own uh, ideas or our own uh, ways to use games have you got any experience Oh, I was putting in the chat. Sorry, Penny. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. Some great points. Um, so I've, I've been using looking at a continuum of engagement in terms of where young people drop in and out, um, at, all the way from kind of social media all the way through to um, like a virtual environment. So like Minecraft or Roblox and kind of getting them to build like effectively build their own youth clubs in, in Minecraft and can block by block design every aspect of their youth club, what it would look like and use it as a meeting space um and obviously within that we meet there so we ran a server where young people came in we all met um the spawn point was in the youth club in our minecraft world and then from there we decided what activity we were going to do or what content we were going to discuss um and we used it as a tool as well for all of those things in between so um that's probably as far as i've been able to kind of push it other than going into kind of vr stuff um, but having that kind of digital world where young people can change every aspect of it, it's, it's massive in youth work. So, Perfect. Uh, I have to uh, tell that uh, you can use Minecraft also in VR. There's uh, Minecraft uh, Wife, uh, working with uh, HTC Wife uh, headsets. So, so you can al also go there uh, as an... Uh, virtual reality perfect way to uh, hang around with friends uh, and and it's more immersive uh, you know going to minecraft and you know just climbing up to a mountain and looking down it's horrible i have a vertigo <laughs> so it's it's horrible to go there but but it's uh, so immersive that uh, it gives you um, new ways to uh, get inside the game. Uh, do you have, uh, has anyone else have 
something. Let me check. Discord and fi uh, football and yeah. Hey, but great to hear that you have uh, all these uh, possibilities uh, done and you have some experience. It's always when you come to have a, uh, this kind of workshop, you, it's really scary that do I go too uh, fast or, or should I start from the scratch or from the beginning. But great to hear that you have some experience. In, in Finland, uh, basically every youth center has its own gaming consoles like PS4 or Xbox uh, or Nintendo Switch. Uh, they are also uh, done online use work through uh, nowadays mainly through Discord. There's lots of different servers to youngsters to pick on. Uh, they are different kind of uh, hobby clubs. So basically, uh, we have uh, after school activities for youngsters that they go and you know play with. Uh, peers so they have uh, gaming uh, youth centers that they can go there and there are you know top end gaming computers to use uh, we have also uh, courses how to do own streaming and on online youth work there are lots of uh, uh, youngsters doing the streaming over the discord and you know people can watch and comment on it. Uh, we have had different kind of game development and coding workshops. And uh, we have that also for uh, over 20 years old uh, unemployed youngsters. So they can go, you know, have a practical training on, on a, a workshop that does uh, this uh, game, small games and, and game development. Uh, lots of uh, youth services in different municipalities ha has their own esports teams and lots of uh, this kind of uh, smaller NGOs has been starting their own esports uh, teams, mainly to mainly for CSGO or Fortnite or, you know, these basic games, Valorant and so on. And as I mentioned, we uh, we have been using it in workshops. We have had uh, uh, social rehab workshops as uh, for gamers that has been for you know past three years at home just gaming. So we play with them. So we start knowing each other bit by bit and building the trust and getting the youngsters life back to the track. And that's mainly done with uh, within in, uh, outreach youth work. And we have also different kind of uh, summer camps uh, during uh, youngsters holidays from school. And uh, what I did in, in while I was working uh, in Uvascula, uh, I, I started having these uh, summer camps about uh, youth participation. And this is an actual map from Uvascula city center. Uh, I have a Minecraft map of Uvascula city center three times three kilometers. So it's nine kilo square kilometers of Minecraft map that we can build on. And there's all these uh, height curves also. And we run this on our server and we can start building our, you know, structures there. And um, I worked as a digital youth work coordinator in, in the US school, and uh, I was working with our participation coordinator and she told me that she would like to try out something digital to uh, get youngsters involved uh, 
to city zoning uh, and get to know what youngster thinks about uh, the city center. In, in Yvaskula, there's uh, this thing that in uh, we have uh, the city center is basically dying <laughs> because all the services has been moved to the bigger malls outside the city limits and and what we uh, unfortunately have is lots of empty spaces in the city center and that gives uh, you know bit scruffy looking uh, city center so so our uh, city planners uh, have been uh, asked asking from uh, our participation coordinator that could she get some input from youngsters that what they would like to see in the city center or is it um, what, what they think about uh, the security feeling in, in, in the city center or should there be more culture or shops or what, what should it be? And uh, on this challenge, uh, I, I told immediately about uh, Minecraft because uh, we should have, uh, uh, we should always use uh, the tools that the youngsters are familiar with. Basically, if we would go and do a you know questionnaire for for the youngsters like what do you think about this and you know tick the box that what what do you think and and that that wouldn't get us anywhere so we have to uh, think about the ways that youngsters know good well and where they can be uh, where they can show their uh, imagination uh, and where we can get the results uh, as basically as a concrete idea to show to the city uh, lectures. Uh, am I right to think Finland have gaming centers for young people? Uh, really, uh, I, I can give you, after this, I can give you a few um, Emails that you can contact, especially I, uh, for you, Vascula. Uh, I have that would be very, brilliant very if you could, mate. Uh, and and uh, I think all the major cities in in uh, in Finland has some kind of gaming uh, place for youngsters. Hmm. In, and are they owned by the youth service in Finland, or are they kind of rented out to the youth service? Or no, no, youth services ha has their own in Helsinki. There's uh, probably three or four actually wow. uh, and in in Uvascular we have uh, uh, uni university for applied sciences they have their own they rent it out for esports teams also but they do also youth work there they have these hobby groups uh, and we have our own with uh, 12 computers and one of them is for you know uh group leader and one mm. of them is for we are gaming awesome yeah, is, is if i pop my email in the chat yeah 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 thanks for that let me get that out of there so uh who were involved with this uh project that i i done uh of course the us city youth services we had um uh, city planning architect or actually to uh, planning this and, and they give actual places that they have been uh, making new uh, ideas and uh, one, one of these places were a park that basically nobody used at, at the moment and they wanted to get uh, give it a new look and they wanted to know like how youngsters would design that park uh, and what kind of activities should be there uh, and and so on uh sorry uh, 
And we had also Business Jyväskylä, which is a Jyväskylä city organization for uh, small shops and venues. Uh, and they wanted to know, like, uh, like business-wise, uh, what kind of uh, services should be in, in the city center. Uh, and they actually sent one guy with suit on and, you know, with a tie to talk with our youngsters, like, uh, you know, business-wise, what they are expecting from the youngsters. <laughs> that was pretty cool because the guy who was working on the business Yvaskula is a former parliament member in, in Finland. So we had, you know, really uh, professional guys coming to tell our youngsters, like what we are hoping from you. And that made uh, this atmosphere for youngsters that, okay, these, these are taking us seriously. They are, they are, you know, sending us to, you know, to a team to, to talk with us. Uh, one uh, part was cultural services. Uh, the cultural services actually uh, paid our we did this uh, camp, uh, just two of us. So I, I was running to camp every day basis, like getting, making sure that there are food and uh, um, making contact with, with the parents and with the, you know, with the city and so on. And we had Nico, uh, who was a student, uh, st he's studying as to be a youth worker. And he was a Minecraft artist, <laughs> and and the cultural services paid his salary for the week, and they paid him a uh, teacher's salary for that week. So he was getting more money than I was, <laughs> which was pretty cool for a student. Uh, so cultural services were paying uh, Nikos fees, uh, and uh, art museum of Yvaskula. Uh, told us that they are uh, making this game art uh, uh, exhibition and, and they wanted to have something art uh, made in games to their exhibition. So, so what we offered that was that we can do, you know, these kind of uh, videos to rotate on their screens during that exhibition and youngsters can tell like what kind of ideas they had and what kind of uh, functionalities they, they have on their designs. And uh, our local newspaper Keski Suomalainen was uh, really interested about this project and they made a whole page long interview from the youngsters and the best part from the point of view of youngsters like what they were getting and what, what they uh, see you kind of uh, and it was really great that uh, the youngsters voice came through uh, through uh, the newspaper and their uh, uh, local uh, public radio so so even uh, during this uh, camp, the youngsters' voice uh, were heard. Uh, Hello, um, I have a quick question. Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, in terms of uh, where you are in Finland, in terms of your digital um, youth work and the level of the um, gaming element of that, uh, yeah. which, which is quite advanced when you compare it to some of the stuff that I've seen over specifically in England, um, where I'm kind of based. So. Um, when you first started those tentative steps of moving into digital youth work, specifically in gaming, um, was the consultation with young people very early on? Did they know exactly what they wanted it to look like? Or was it like you provided something and then they gave consultation to that and shaped it? Uh, I, uh, first of all, I, I use really wide methods of digital youth work. Gaming is just a small portion sure, yeah. of, of it. I do lots of uh, podcasts and digital videos. You know, we have a 
recording studio uh, where I'm teaching youngsters to use equipment and so on. But uh, the idea of this Minecraft camp was just, you know, something uh, where I expected to youngsters to have some input. And I just, you know, laid out and wanted to see like what's going to happen. And the camp was immediately full. There were uh, over 15 participants uh, in uh, just one weekend. And we had only uh, 10 computers. So so that was the maximum amount. And, and the best part was that uh, uh, there were uh, girls and boys participating on, on this camp. And uh, I lost my thought. Did I answer a question? But yeah. basically, the, the, uh, it was a trial and error kind of thing. Like, right. okay, let, let, let's see what happens and, and let's, you know, advance from there. Sure. And just because looking at some of the barriers that I come up against in terms of my own uh, service, my youth organization, um, we're local authority run. So there's a lot of barriers to digital youth work and gaming. Um, there's a lot of biases against it. So I'm trying to work through that. Um, yeah. And looking at the, your presentation as well, I'm definitely stealing some of it to go back to my organization to build that kind of argument. But I was just, um, they're, they're always asking me to kind of obviously consult with young people, take their kind of information and go from there. But because we have nothing as, as an example to start from, I was just kind of wondering um, what would you advise to kind of start with and then use that as a jump off point? Uh, I would recommend to start playing with youngsters. Sure. Basically, basically um, you have to have your own Discord server or, or uh, you know, st starting point that you contact these youngsters that are keen players. Yeah. A and uh, or you can just, you know, drop it, you know, uh, like check out uh, like who's coming and maybe do some collaboration with schools or, or something like that. But uh, for me, it was quite easy way to you know get started with because uh i knew the young, most of the youngsters already and it was like just like okay are you interested please come and, and let's check out what we can do yeah. and and most of these youngsters uh had been in our uh, in our discord server but never talked even in the discord and they, I asked them uh, when they participated our summer camp uh, and they told that they were first time attending in a, in a youth center. So basically there are segments of youngsters that are not willing even talk in, in Discord server. Yeah. When, when you're, I know, but, but when the uh, uh, content of, of the camp is something that they feel their own they are willing to participate absolutely so, yeah so there, there are different uh, walls that you have to break through before uh, you know getting to point that actually the youngsters could uh, tell you like we want to do a LAN party because there are you know these kind of steps before you can do it Sure. Or, I, I, or at least I had. Thank you. Though. Uh, I'll yeah. Appreciate it. I, I, I was reading the question to the University of Cardiff. That, that sounds really great. Uh, we have also done uh, collaboration with, with uh, U.S. University. Uh, they ha actually have a uh, uh, program for... Uh, game studies and they are uh, studying games uh, as um, gaming culture and gaming as environment uh, yes we have material how to do one party i can uh, give it to you after this presentation or you can go to verke.org and search from there it should be also in, in English. 
but uh, let's get back to the presentation. This is uh, what we did. So basically, uh, I don't put the voices on because it's in Finnish and we don't have the subtitles. So <laughs> I will narrate this through. So basically what we did was this, uh, uh, the city zoning had, had this uh, uh, empty uh, park that nobody used. And they wanted to know what would youngsters build to that park. And this was a project for these uh, two youngsters. And they reorganized this park how they would like to see it. And they made these, you know, these rope slides and, uh, um, you know, hang around area which is shaped like pizza, the pond, a uh, heart shaped pond, and so on. They are also children's playground uh, with sandbox and so on. As it's built in Minecraft, everything's a bit, <laughs> you know, uh, square, but, but they are, you know, you can get your ideas through. They had this uh, ice cream service, uh, and in the winter time, they would like to sell sausage, sausage cheese <laughs> in that. Uh, and there's even a uh, working uh, refrigerator over there and so on they made this all the all equipment also to these and uh, and automatic doors and these are the ideas what they would like to see like rainbow <laughs> rainbows and rainbow uh, flags over uh, on our uh, flag poles um, is anybody running already running a Minecraft server that maybe workers and young people could join? Uh, I, I would recommend that uh, you should start one. You know, it doesn't cost basically anything. Uh, for uh, it's probably for ten people, it's for free, and over that you have to pay something up, or you can if you have good connections to your city's uh, ICT department, probably they, they have already some servers that you can, you know, use, but you have to ask around. It doesn't take, uh, it doesn't take a good internet connection to run a Minecraft server, or it doesn't take a lot of uh, so, processor time from for a computer to run Minecraft server. But basically that was the video that we we gave to our city zoning and they they had a clear view like what the youngsters would do. And we had different uh, places for uh, youngsters to build and and this was just one. Uh, one to uh, two person T. Uh, we had uh, another activity with youngsters and uh, on on autumn and we uh, were asked to do this kind of um, multicultural center that has a concert hall, uh, a library, uh, movie, uh, you know, movie theater and, and so on. So, so uh, and art museum. And they wanted to see like what kind of services youngsters would put in and what kind of structure they would actually do. So uh, the idea what I had was to make these, you know, when there's a new building project coming on the uh, left co up corner, there's this actual observational picture from one mall. And they always have these 3D models with, you know, persons, you know, posing stupidly, you know, retouched from in 
uh, Photoshop. So we decided to make our own uh, observational pictures from our project. So, so uh, youngsters took pictures uh, over green screen and they edited them on Photoshop and take screenshots from the game and put their, uh, their own uh, persons inside the game. And so we make these maybe a bit spooky, <laughs> crazy uh, observational pictures. Uh, and this is what, what uh, end game looks like and in four days they built this massive place called heart of ubascula so they they gave the place a name and they made these uh, roof terraces uh, uh, you know inside garden there are movie theater uh, library cafes you know you name it and they made it uh, there were six persons doing this for four days. It's it's quite huge, uh, and this uh, place in, in the top right corner there's this uh, web address in Uvascula City Museum is uh, promoting this on their uh, art exhibition about uh, art in games. So we uh, managed to. Uh, talk with youngsters about architecture as an art form and they finally get their own uh, art into the art museum and the, uh, as I have been telling you now it's not just playing a game it's never has been about playing a game. It has always been about participation. And through this game, we gave youngsters a way to uh, come and tell us what they would like to see in the city center. And what we gave them uh, were a place where we could teach them social skills uh, and talk about uh, healthy game culture with, you know, we had these stops between the days and we were, you know, exercising and, and uh, we gave them knowledge about photographing and streaming and, you know, how to use green screen. Uh, we told about uh, photoshopping and how to set up their own Minecraft server and how to use mods in, in, uh, in Minecraft and how to use text commands and so on. Um, and of course the youngsters, this is what we can offer. And we cannot say to youngsters like that you have to learn these things by this four day period. This is basically uh, optional. Most of the youngsters just came to play for four days without adults complaining all the time about their Minecraft playing. And that's fine. That's their holiday and that's their vacation and let them, you know, spend their time doing what they actually love. But these were the options, optional <laughs> part uh, about the four days that we, we gave them. Uh, I have few uh, few games that uh, could be run in si similar uh, camps or similar ways. Uh, one of those is City Skylines. Ha have you heard about it? It's Finnish-made game. If you played uh, Sim City games uh, on your childhood or, or past. This is the next level SimCity, way better AI, top end, you know, graphics and so on. And this is actually a picture about uh, Tampere. This is Tampere made into the city skylines game. So if you go to check out, you know, 
fast Google Maps and <laughs> search for Tampere, it actually looks like this. So you can do your own city or own neighborhood into a game. The bad part about this is that it doesn't have the multiplayer uh, version yet. You have to use a mod to modify the game to, you know, get youngsters to play it together. Not for the beginners, but but the end results can can be huge. <laughs> the other one uh, I like to pro promote is Walheim. Walheim just uh, BC Gamer magazine picked this game as the game of the year for the last year. Uh, good part is that it's really versatile. Uh, there's lots of different assets you can, and and the physics motor uh, is superb. So so basically, you cannot build a pile of stones until heaven, like 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 in uh, in, in Minecraft, because the physics motor just you know makes them to pile a collapse. So you have to have these support beams, and you know you have to uh, think uh, structure wise like how to do it. And you can do, this is great example, what a beautiful um, things you can do in the game. Uh, quite easy to set up the server, quite easy to uh, use uh, uh, when you play the game. The game mechanics are really uh, uh, easy. Uh, why it is a 16 plus game? It doesn't actually have a, a PA, GI rating yet because this is an early access game, and in Finland, uh, when when something is in early access, we should think about it as a eighteen plus game. But I have been uh, reading about the B B G I uh, ratings, and when there's uh, actually you can see blood and you have alcoholic beverages, it should be 16 plus, unfortunately. But let's hope that it will come uh, to, to 12 plus or something like that. But the game is early access. That means that uh, it's not ready yet. It's like 0 0.2 version, not even 1.0. So, so it, it takes time that the game actually becomes finished, but truly amazing game. And, and I, I will, you know, tell that it's, it's really game of the year for last year. The best, uh, I have o over 100 hours on that one. Uh, the last uh, I want to tell is Fortnite. And Fortnite, you know, everybody knows Fortnite, but you probably didn't know that you can build up your own island into the game and you can go play it with your friends. And there's lots of assets like, you know, hole for walls or stairwells or something like that. You can build your own house or mansion on stuff like that. So it could be a place, you know, you know you could hang around with youngsters and build something up together or uh, build something for the youngsters and invite them to your uh, place to play. Cons are that there are guns and you can kill <laughs> kill other one or and also at least I, I, I have been playing Fortnite with youngsters and it's always a serious chaos you know the youngsters who are playing fortnite they are a bit uh, easily distracted like the guys doing minecraft are more settled and maybe may a bit more calm so uh, it's it's about personality also so you have to pick the right game for the right group and you know and yeah you, you have to uh, know what you are uh, selling and what group. But 
we are nearly end of our uh, time and I would like to hear what kind of ideas and thoughts did this gave to you and do you have some kind of uh, uh, does your uh, municipality or uh, NGO have some goals that could be achieved through digital gaming as way I used Minecraft in Yuvaskula or do you have um, I, I, I was going to say I'm completely blown away that everything Finland do uh, which is amazing but I was wondering in terms of youth work roles how much time you get to spend in building these worlds for young people to access to upskill yourself um, and things like that uh Actually, the city of Jyväskylä, I, I showed you earlier, I ordered that from Denmark. There's this uh, place, uh, company called Geoboxers. I, can, I don't remember the uh, address, but I will give you the company's name. Geoboxers is a company that uses open... Uh, uh, open the street map data and takes it to the Minecraft and you can buy your you know own square kilometer or 10 square kilometers and they they will build it up through their uh, servers really interesting way to you know ease up to work uh, for question like how much I, I have been spending on gaming uh, I don't do that much uh, during my work hours <laughs> it's just uh, my hobby more more or less and I I have uh, my uh, older son is 12 years old so I'm he keeps me <laughs> in, in track of all the new games uh, and we try them out together and I, I have a possibility to you know keep in touch with the youngsters we also have, uh, have uh, we, we also have this uh, discord server and that's the one place to also keep up with uh, what the youngsters are playing and how they are playing the games so uh, basically we are using minecraft the way that it wasn't supposed to be used uh, and we are basically we we were rewritten the rules of the game uh, and gave the gave it a new purpose, and that's the way to uh, get uh, games into youth work. Not just playing. Playing is is one part. It's uh, about when, when you play with youngsters, you can talk about the content of the game, like how does it feel to kill a person in a game, and is this ethically okay, and how can you, uh, you know, is there a content that affects you, or is there players that affect you, you know, do you have some kind of defenses about, you know, confronting these bad, ugly players. Uh, that's fine, but if you break the rules of the game and you know write your own rules uh, to match with youth work, you you can do almost anything, I, or at least I think so. <laughs> Welcome to Finland. I'm uh, happy to. Uh, Take you. I I can be your local Sherpa and show you around, at least in in Yvaskula. And uh, I, as I told, I I nowadays work in Berge. Uh, I just started a new position in Berge. I do cultural digital youth work, and uh, my job also keeps inside the gaming, but it it it's also about you know, workshops and handicrafts and uh, maker culture and so on. So uh, Verke also does uh, international youth work and we have uh, 
lots of groups coming in Finland and I can show you the right way or right persons in, in, in Finland who to get contact and and what kind of uh, like, like I, I was talking with Barry just a few weeks ago and I told him to get contact with Uvascula and now they are starting you know international uh, virtual reality uh, youth work Uh, well, there are few digital youth workers in, in Finland. I, I, I think I was probably one of the first one uh, working for some city. And Berke has been over 10 years. And they have been trying to get uh, these, you know, digitally orientated youth workers to be a, a, as some kind of digital youth work uh, coordinator. And I, I was probably the one, first one to succeed in that one. And uh, after that, there has been uh, yeah, multiple... You know what? Do you mind if yeah. I ask, were you like working yeah. in one community or was it city-wide? Was it nationally or when you first started? When I first started, uh, uh, I, I was running a... a uh, I was running a small organization called Yvelem Nuoret in, in Yvaskula, and I was r running these uh, animation uh, hobby clubs and photographing and, you know, stuff like that. And we had this own gaming um, room with six computers, and that was uh, 10 years ago. And, and after that, I uh, worked in gender-sensitive special youth work project and I was working with youngsters uh, who had been at home for many years just playing uh, and we made these new youth work methods to get them back to the part of the society and after that I worked with asylum seekers after that I was in outreach youth work and after that I uh, Got the position in um, digital youth work coordinator in in Uvascula. So so that's my background, and uh, I was running to, as, as as a coordinator for over two years, and now I'm doing my basically my job. I what I did in Uvascula, I'm now doing it nationally and, and internationally, as you can see. <laughs> uh, what barriers? Well. Uh, of course, the funding, it's not easy to get funding as much as you need for by, you know, 20 computers. It's, it's hard. Uh, other one was to, you know, uh, everybody taught, taught that youngsters are playing enough and they, they can do it at home like like they thought that i was stupid that i was trying to get them to play more uh, and that was uh, you know having the right mindset it, that that was probably the hardest one but uh, actually the um uh, digital youth work in sense of uh, having a recording studio or podcast studio or green screen studio it's much easier because photographing has been done or videos has been done for ages now. And somehow gaming has been, you know, some kind of no-go zone. And everybody uh, has this idea like, uh, like, I don't know anything about gaming, so I cannot do that. But when you are doing youth work, you don't have to do know anything about gaming or specific games because you can do it as any other youth work method you can ask from the youngsters and they are really willing to tell you about their beloved hobby and they are really keen to just talk with some adult about their really special hobby so you don't have to know anything let the youngsters you know teach you and if, if you want to start a, uh, your own Discord server, uh, ask the youngsters to build it up and, you know, 
be in the process and be involved. Or if you want to do a Minecraft server, I know that the youngsters can do it. Uh, the se second camp that we run, uh, we, they built this uh, heart of Yvaskula. There were two autistic uh, youngsters, part of the group. So they are also involved. Sorry, we are running a bit tight schedule. So maybe I'll just answer one more. Uh, struggles with engagement in the server. Uh, do you mean the Discord server or... Uh, um, the hardest part uh, building up a Discord server was that uh, there were lots of trolls coming up our uh, server and, you know, spamming all the conversations that we had and they were, you know, total mess. But after a while, they understood that uh, I'm not an some newbie <laughs> into the uh, scene. I, I have been using uh, IRC since, you know, 96 or so. So I, I knew the culture. So after a while, I just, you know, told them like, okay, now you have enough time with trolling. Let's, you know, start making this good. And I'm searching for moderators for the, uh, to moderate this server. Are you willing to participate? So the youngsters that were uh, the worst ones <laughs> actually became the moderators on, on that server. Uh, and uh, they started taking me seriously, like, like okay, this guy can do it. So uh, at the moment we have uh, about 10, 12 different moderators keeping up with the conversation. They have all the rights to uh, modify the server and they stream their games and keep up the conversation and you know uh, and and they check out that no one plays uh, games over 30 plus uh, age limit mm. as i mentioned earlier we have uh, own uh, peer support discord server uh, run by verke and there's over thousand youth workers at the moment. Uh, so, but it's in Finnish. I, I recommend that you should do similar in into Scotland, and you know, ask around, pitch ideas, maybe do some collaboration between uh, your cities. Not allowed Discord. Oh no. But hey. Uh, this is it. This is my, uh, I, I think my time is up, unfortunately. Uh, it was really, really nice that you participated. 